All right, lab 13, digestive system. Start off with, go to page 137. There are a few things you can cross off. So under mannequin and sagittal head model, you can cross off the soft palate. Um, it's too close to the uvula to, in my mind, do both. Uh, the stomach, we'll be calling it the lower esophageal sphincter. So cross out cardiac. The fundus, calling it fundus, so cross out fundic region. Pylorus, so cross out pyloric region. Down to 12, we're going to call that the ileocecal sphincter, so cross out valve. Um, then on page 138 for the mandible model, we are doing premolars, so you can cross out bicuspids. And we're going to do pulp rather than pulp cavity. So for number nine, cross out cavity, we're just going to call it pulp. All right, the digestive system is a approximately 30 foot long tube that goes from the mouth all the way down to the anus. And it is often called the alimentary canal. So the digestive tract is also known as the alimentary canal. There are also additional accessory organs that are there to aid in mechanical digestion. That's breaking food up into smaller and smaller pieces. And others that help aid in chemical digestion, which breaks the molecules from really big molecules down to small, easier to absorb uh, simple molecules. The alimentary canal starts with the oral cavity, goes to the pharynx. From there, the esophagus carries it down to the stomach. From the stomach, it goes into the small intestine, broken up into the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. And then goes from there to the large intestine, where we have the cecum, the first pouch of the large intestine, with the appendix hanging off, the ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum, uh, and then at the very end, of course, that very bottom opening goes through the anal canal to the anus. So oral cavity, so mouth to anus. The accessory structures include the salivary glands, so parotid salivary glands, sublingual salivary glands under the tongue, submandibular salivary glands near the mandible, the teeth and tongue, uh, the liver in the abdominal cavity, the gallbladder, which is inferior to the liver, and then behind or posterior to the stomach, we have the pancreas. So here is our head models. You can see uh, near the ear, this large structure here is the parotid salivary gland, the parotid gland, the right and left one. In the oral cavity, we have the tongue, allowing us to taste things as well as able to manipulate to move the food around in the oral cavity. Below the tongue is the sublingual gland. We have a pair of sublingual glands. And then under the mandible is the submandibular glands. We have a pair of submandibular glands. So the three pairs of salivary glands are the parotid gland, sublingual glands, and submandibular glands. Also found in the oral cavity, we have the hard palate. The hard palate is the bony portion of the roof of the oral cavity. The soft palate, which is made up of muscle and connective tissue, and then that dangly bit in the back of the oral cavity, looks a little bit like a punching bag, that is the uvula. And the uvula hangs off the soft palate, and the uvula and the soft palate are very important because they prevent food from going up into the nasal cavity. So when we swallow, they prevent food from going up into the nasal cavity. The teeth. Uh, are also very important for mechanical digestion. We have 32 teeth in the adult. On one quarter jaw, one quarter jaw, we would have three molars. In the back, two premolars, one canine, and in front, two incisors. So on the lower jaw, there would be a total of four incisors. In the mouth as a whole, eight incisors, uh, canine, total of four canines, total of eight premolars, and a total of 12 molars. Unless you had your wisdom teeth removed, then you would only have eight molars. And that's the wisdom tooth back here. The top part of the tooth that you can see is called the crown. The bottom part going into the uh, mandible or maxilla bones is the root. So top part crown, bottom part root. You can also look at the tooth in layers. The core of the tooth is the pulp, that is the living part with the blood vessels and the nerves. Um, the pulp goes through 
the root canal, that open space there at the end, inferior end of the tooth. Surrounding the pulp is a thick layer called the dentin. So all of this is dentin. And then the most uh, superficial layer is the enamel. The enamel, the white part of the tooth, the hardest substance produced by our body. Um, so again, here is the oral cavity, which would then bring us to the pharynx. As we know, the digestive system only lose, uses the oral pharynx and the laryngopharynx. We do not want food going up into the nasopharynx. So oral cavity to oral pharynx and to laryngopharynx. And then from there into the esophagus. The esophagus being a long tube that goes down the uh, neck through the thoracic cavity and then reaches the stomach. So here is the stomach in the abdominal cavity. The very beginning of the stomach is the lower esophageal sphincter. This prevents contents of the stomach from going back into the esophagus. You can break the stomach up into regions. The top part, the hump here, is the fundus. The largest portion of the stomach is the body. And then the inferior end, the tail end of it, is the pylorus. And the pylorus ends with the pyloric sphincter. Pyloric sphincter controls the movement of the stomach contents into the small intestine. And then we see all these folds on the inside of the stomach. These folds are called the rugae, one rugae, many rugae, and they allow the stomach to stretch as we fill it with food and drink. The accessory structures in this area include the liver with its right lobe and left lobe. The liver produces bile that gets created into the duodenum. Inferior to the liver is this green structure here called the gallbladder. The gallbladder stores bile. And then posterior to the stomach, behind the stomach is the pancreas. Pancreas is important. It produces many digestive enzymes that help to break down the food chemically. And also bicarbonate. Bicarbonate will neutralize the acid produced in the stomach. Here is one of our models. So here is the liver in reddish brown. Here's the gallbladder. The gallbladder leads to the cystic duct, carrying bile out of the gallbladder. The screen structure here is the common hepatic duct, carrying bile from the liver. They fuse to form the common bile duct, which passes through the pancreas and then empties into the duodenum of the small intestine. So common bile duct goes all the way down, leads to the duodenum of the small intestine. The pancreas is shown here as a long pancreatic duct, which will carry its secretions, the bicarbonate and the digestive enzymes into the duodenum of the small intestine. So small intestine, the beginning of it is, short, is this C-shaped little curve here going from the stomach and curving around the pancreas. This is called the duodenum. The upper left quadrant of the small intestines over here is the jejunum. And then the largest portion, the lower right quadrant of the small intestines, that is called the ileum. So food would travel duodenum to jejunum to ileum. Here is a cross-section, a model showing a cross-section of the wall of the small intestines. So up here and near the top would be the open space, the lumen inside the small intestine. Down here is the end outside of the small intestine. The small intestine has four layers. The deepest layer is the mucosa layer right next to the lumen where the food will be. So that's the mucosa layer. Underneath that is the submucosa layer. Under that is the muscularis or muscular layer. I'll accept either. And below that is the serosa, serosa layer. Then the mucosa layer, we have these finger-like projections. These finger-like projections are called one villus, many villi. Uh, within these villuses, villi, we see blood capillaries for receiving the nutrients absorbed, and also this green structure called the lacteal. Lacteal will receive the um, lipids, the fatty material that's being absorbed. Um, down in the submucosa layer, we have this big blue structure called the lymph nodule, important for fighting any pathogens that try to get absorbed into our body. In the muscularis or muscular layer, we have the circular layer that goes around the um, small intestine and can close it. And the longitudinal layer that goes along the length and makes the small intestine a little shorter. Here is the uh, large intestines. The large intestine starts with the compartment called the cecum. Then the material goes travels up the ascending colon, goes across from right to left via the transverse colon, down left side via the descending colon. And from there, the sigmoid colon would lead to the rectum and the anal canal and the anus. Again, the beginning of the large intestine is the cecum. 
Beacom receives the materials from the small intestine, from the ileum of the small intestine. There is a valve here called the ileocecal sphincter. It controls the movement of material from the ileum to the cecum. Ileocecal sphincter, ileum cecum. Hanging off the cecum is this little squiggle here. That little squiggle there is the appendix. So again, cecum, cecum leads to ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum, anal canal, anus. Um, this strip running along the length of the large intestine is smooth muscle tissue called the tinea coli. And contractions in the tinea coli form these little pouches. One pouch is called a hostrum, many are hostra. So the pouches, the hostra, are formed because of contractions of the tinea coli. This sheet of material here is part of the peritoneum, specifically the mesentery. Again, here is a summary of all the parts of the large intestine, including the mesentery here. And that is it for this lecture. Be sure to see if you watch the model videos.